for our liberty and Texas sovereignty under our Texas and federal constitutions. Please welcome Libertarian Gubernational Candidate and the only gubernatorial candidate agreeing to speak here today, Kathy Glass. Is there something they could stand on here? And they said, no, I asked Doc Green if he'd been over behind the stove. He declined. So we're just going to have to adapt, improvise, overcome. <laughs> to my fellow Texans and all Americans in the world, who knows where those words come from? Well, it was Colonel William Barrett Travis, letter from the Alamo, his victory or death speech. We remember those words because they're not just words, but words born of mighty deeds. Deeds that changed the course of history. For what would America have been without Texas? Oh, I hear Dr. Green saying, I'd like to find out. <laughs> not yet. History has a way of repeating itself, especially when it comes to tyrants. And once again, we Texans find ourselves in a situation where we have to lead the way to fight back against a federal tyranny. We need to, as my bus says, I hope you got to see my bus coming through, resist federal tyranny again. I want to be your Texas governor to unite Texans so that we can do this once again, what we've done before, face down a federal tyrant and change the course of history. Our biggest problem is a federal government that refuses to abide by its constitutional limits and states and the rest of us who do not insist that it do so. And we see this form of federal tyranny in all manifestations. We also see a little bit of state and local grown tyranny too, but that's another subject for another speech. Today we are here to stand with our brothers here on the Red River to see the BLM are threatening to confiscate, to grab, to steal land that's been in families for generations land which they have no rightful claim to ownership of. There is no constitutional authority for the federal government or any of its minions to own land or manage land, particularly under these circumstances. Now you might say there's some implied ability to own land for certain situations, but not this one. They didn't pay anything for it. They didn't do anything to earn it. And they're trying to take it away from the people who have. Now, who owns land in Texas is decided by Texas law in Texas. And the same is true for Oklahoma. And the answer to that question, who owns this land, will not be the federal government under any circumstances because they have no claim. Why Texas? Why, why is it fall to Texas? Well, it's a variety of things. It's many things. It's our history. It's our culture. It's our philosophy, our ideas. that makes Texas uniquely, uh, uniquely positioned to lead the way on this. Ronald Reagan said that America is freedom's last stand. I agree with that, but I say Texas is America's last stand. And if we don't do this here, then it won't be done. Only Texas has the power, the heft, what it takes to push back against a tyrannical government. I said Washington is broken. I don't pay much attention to it anymore, except to see what they're going to do to us next. And I said the two-party system is corrupt and broken. That's why I'm more libertarian. That's why I'm working in the Libertarian Party. But I also say that it is only Texas that can provide what it is going to take to push back on this tyranny. So that's why I say Texas. It's not that I'm turning my back on America, it's just the opposite. It's we're taking our country back, one state at a time, starting with Texas. Yeah. Making Texas strong and free, sovereign and independent, as our Texas Constitution says we are, subject only to the United States Constitution, that's the best thing I can do for the country that I love. So that's why Texas. Why governor? Well, sometimes people ask me, are you going to run for president? And I just look at them and say, I want to be Texas governor. Why would I accept a demotion? Yeah. I always get a laugh out of that, but it's true. 
if you love liberty and you see things the way I do, if you see this threat the way I do, and you see the only way to push back on it the way I do, then the office of Texas governor is the most powerful on the face of the earth. And anybody who doesn't see it that way shouldn't be seeking the office. So that's why I'm running for governor. Because we need someone at the top. And we need people all the way down to and including our constitutional county sheriffs to help us nullify unconstitutional acts. That's what you call the process where the states, this is what our founders designed and left us, how we would act when, notice I said when, not if, when the federal government refused to abide by the Constitution. We we're supposed to push back in a process called nullification. It just hasn't happened. It's starting to happen now all over, but not in Texas because we don't have the right leaders. We have leaders in Texas who think that standing up to the federal government is suing them. Well, I'm here to tell you the federal government is not afraid of a lawsuit. They are not shivering and backing down when they get a letter, even a strongly worded letter, that says, if you don't stop it, I will sue you for the 31st time. Well, you got to ask, what happened to the other 30 times? How'd that go? Does anybody here think that the Supreme Court is going to save our country? It's going to start enforcing the Constitution? Because if you think that, I'm going to ask you, well, why have they been doing this for the last 100 years? And why are we in the mess we are in? No, that is not nullification. Nullification is saying, as a state, as a state policy, we, we, that act is unconstitutional. BLM, you're threatening to seize this land. It's unconstitutional. And if you do it, it will be in violation of Texas law against theft and trespass and a whole lot of other things. And you'll be arrested. Just like yeah. anybody else. Yeah. Well, they didn't have a federal government backing them. So that's why I say, don't sue the buzzards. Arrest them. That's why I want to be governor, though, because I'm the only one who sees it this way. The only one in its race who has the vision of the tyranny that is coming at us even more than we've seen in the past. A plan for how to defeat it and the guts to see it through. Because that's what's going to take a whole lot of guts. I mean, it's all going to take standing together. And that's what nullification is. We had this thing uh, happen quite back in the 80s where one landowner here actually had his land taken. He went through the federal court system. He couldn't even get to the Supreme Court. But it wouldn't have helped him. They don't enforce the Constitution. But he was just one man standing alone the federal government. They pick you off one at a time that way. But this way, when we say, this, we're going to nullify that act, we're going to enforce Texas law, and we'll arrest you if you violate it, then you say, you mess with one property owner here, and you are messing with Texas. And didn't your mama tell you not to do that? So my plan for Texas independence, I won't go through it now, but it is a plan, it's not secession. It is a plan for when Texas, when we all experience the fact that Washington is not just broken, but totally collapsed. Taking with it things we've come to rely on, rightly or wrongly, like over a third of our budget comes from Washington. When that day comes, when those hard times comes, we need to have a plan for Texas to stand strong and free, stay sovereign, independent, as we are and should have been all along. We need to start acting. We don't need to declare sovereignty or ask for sovereignty. We need to just act like a sovereign entity that we are. And that's what my plan is designed to do. But in the day when we don't have a functioning currency, what do we do here in Texas? Well, we thought of that. I thought of that. And that's why I think I'm need to be Texas governor, and no, if I don't win, I don't much care who up, who does, because Texas is not going to survive, I'm afraid, because the others don't even articulate these issues, they don't even seem to be aware of them. So that's why I'm saying, don't waste your vote and vote for someone that you know is not going to see us through and do what it takes to make Texas strong. We talk about these things, that sounds pretty dire, but I'm here to tell you, I know the outcome of this. I know how this thing ends. I read the last chapter in the book. I've seen the last part of the movie. I know that the good guys win. And we're the good guys. 
I know that the forces of liberty will defeat the forces of tyranny. And we'll do again what we've done before. We suffered some losses in our last efforts to fight Mecca Federal Tribe. We suffered the Goliath. We suffered the Alamo. But it all led up to San Jacinto. So yeah, we may have some losses here or there, but we're not giving up. Because that's not an option. Giving, I, there is no give up in me or in you, I suspect. And that's why we will never let stop. We will, uh, to end this speech, the way we started, the le words of uh, Travis, there's no retreat, no surrender. No retreat, no surrender. We need to unite so that as Texans we can do again what we've done before, face down tyranny and change the course of history. So say it again with me. No retreat, no surrender. No retreat, no surrender. No retreat. No surrender. Thank you very much. Now, in full disclosure, all of the gubernatorial candidates for open care or for governor ha are are open carry friendly. Apparently, Wendy Davis loves us. <laughs> That's what she said. Greg Abbott loves us. Everybody's tripping over themselves about who supports open carry. But let me tell you something. Who showed up today? Because all three candidates were invited. All three candidates. And only one bothered to show up and actually put action be behind their press releases saying that, oh, I, I support gun rights in Texas. They'll say that to your face, and then they'll stab you in the back. <laughs> 